All right. So last week, my friends and I, um, being part of the uh, local neighborhood outreach, uh, went to the North Hollywood Metro Station to evangelize. And uh, we encountered a gentleman named Sam. And uh, Sam is from Mexico, and he's, uh, he was in America for vacation. So um, we introduced ourselves, and then um, I asked him a couple of questions about his uh, religious background. And then Sam told us that he's not Catholic, uh, he's a Christian. And then I asked him a question about the gospel. Uh, so I asked, hey, if, if I'm a, a non-believer, if, uh, if I'm not a Christian, and I ask you, what must I do to have eternal life? And then Sam answered, that you got to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And to my surprise, I was shocked because Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, that salvation is by faith alone and not works. So I asked him, hey, what, what about Jesus? What do you do with Jesus? Do you have to believe in Jesus to have eternal life? And Sam said, no. So Sam grew up in a Christian home. I mean, he believed that he's a Christian, but obviously he did not believe the salvation is by faith alone, but by works of righteousness. So the question is, can Sam be a Christian? And this is the problem with Christianity today. I mean, there's so many people who claim to be a Christian, and yet their word and action contradict with the word of God. So here's the million dollar question for all of us. How do we know if we are a Christian? Or how do you know if you are a Christian? So, so today we're going to look at the text. And the text is John chapter 8, verse uh, 31 to verse 36. So we turn your Bible to John chapter 1, verse 31 to verse 36. So Jesus said to the Jew who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciple, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And they answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? And Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever, for the son remains forever. So if the Son set you free, then you will be free indeed. So, in John chapter 8, verse 31 and 36, Jesus presents to us two marks of a true disciple of Jesus so that we can test our faith and we examine our life. So the first mark of a true Christian is that he or she abides in the Word of God. So in verse 31, Jesus stated, if you abide in my word, then you are truly my disciple. So the first evidence that you are a Christian is that you abide in his word. And to abide in his word is to rely upon his word. But notice in verse 31, Jesus said to the Jew who had belief in him. So, so these Jews are a brand new Christian. I mean, they just made the initial, uh, the initial step of faith. Now, they believe in Jesus for two reasons. First of all, they, they could have witnessed the miracle of Jesus. Um, some Jew witnessed the feeding of the 5,000. Um, so, for example, Nicodemus came to Jesus and he said, Rabbi, we know that you come from God, for no one can perform these signs. So Nicodemus knew that Jesus came from God because he witnessed his miracle. And the, the second reason that these Jews believe in Jesus is because they heard of a uh, message that Jesus proclaimed. So in verse 24 of chapter 8, um, he, Jesus said, I told you that you would die in your sin, for unless you believe that I am He, you would die in your sins. And also in verse um, 28, Jesus further affirmed His deity. And Jesus said, when you have looked at the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, 
and that I do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me, and he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. And then in verse 30, notice it say that as he was saying these things, many believe in him. So obviously, they wish the miracle of Jesus, and they heard the message of Jesus, and therefore, they believe in Jesus. However, um, Jesus believed in the facts about Jesus. Uh, did you believe in the facts about Jesus? But however, the scriptures also tell us that the devil believed in the facts about Jesus. Um, I mean, the devil acknowledged that Jesus is the Son of God. So the question is, how can their faith or our faith be different from the faith of the devil? Or how, how can our belief be different from the devil's belief? Um, so John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, Jesus gave us the answer. Um, the first benchmark of being a disciple, and he said that if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciple. And to abide is to rely upon his word. So in John chapter 15, verse 4, Jesus gives us an illustration of abiding. Um, he said, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So for a branch to bear fruit, it's got to be attached to the vine. It's got to abide in the vine. It's got to rely upon the vine. So for us to abide in the word of God, you have to rely upon it. you got to rely upon it like, like your life depends upon it. To, to abide in the Word of God is to, to study it, to read it, to meditate upon it, and to obey it, and then to teach it. I mean, you, you can't be a Christian and then toss the Bible away. But unfortunately, even though the Jew had belief in Jesus, but later they didn't accept the Word of Jesus. So in verse 43, if you read with me in verse 43, Jesus said, why do you not why do you not understand what I said? Because you cannot bear to hear my word. And even in, in verse um, 45, he said, But because I tell you the truth, and you not believe me. So obviously these Jews confess that they believe in Jesus, but in fact they rejected the word of God. And therefore in verse 47, Jesus said this, Whoever is of God, whoever is of God hears the word of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. So the evidence of the fact that the Jew did not abide in scripture is that they are not of God. That they have they were not true disciples. So, and this is a pervasive problem that we face today. So many people claim to be a Christian, and yet they, they reject the Word of God. They reject its authority, its inerrancy, and even its inspiration. So the first part of a true Christian is that, that a true Christian obeys God's Word. So, so the second mark of a true Christian is that he or she is free from sin. So one benefit of being a Jesus disciple is that you will know the truth. And a theologian defined truth as, as conformity to facts. So basically truth is fact and, and, and it is true. I mean, I mean truth is, is facts. So the truth here not only referred to the facts about Jesus as the Messiah and the Son of God, but the truth is not just only fact, but also a person, the person. So in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the truth. So the truth is not just fact, the truth is the person. And in Ephesians 4, 21, say that the truth is in Jesus. So what is the benefit of knowing the truth? Is that the truth will set you free. And, and facts don't set you free, I mean the truth um, in Jesus who set you free. Now you might ask the question, you know, free from what? What kind of freedom is that? 
And it's not political freedom because, um, because the, the Jews know that they are under the rule of the Roman. And, and, and so obviously it's not political freedom. I mean, it's not religious freedom. It's not freedom to sin either. But it is, it is a freedom from sin. Because in verse 34, Jesus stated that truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. So the truth set us free from the bondage about sin. So when you trust in the Lord Jesus and abide in His word, you will know the truth. And then the truth will set us free from the bondage of our sin. And the Jew objected to the statement. They said, no, I mean, we're not, I mean, we are, we are already free. We have never been enslaved to anybody. And obviously, they could have forgot their Sunday school class um, because in the, in, the, in the history, they were, they were enslaved to many nations. Um, Dr. MacArthur argued that, that they could refer to their inward um, sense of freedom because they believed that they were offspring of Abraham. But nevertheless, Jesus stated that everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. Now the Jew was not free because they were not offspring of Abraham. Why? Because they sought to keep Jesus. I mean, Jesus is the true descendant of Abraham. And yet, if they sought to kill Jesus, it's mean that they are not uh, offspring of Abraham. Because if you are of Abraham, you would never kill your kinsman. Right? So, so the Jew are not free. In fact, they are slave to sin. And only the son, the slave does not remain in the house, only the son remains in the house. If the son will set you free, then you are free indeed. So the second mark of the true Christian is that you are you are free from your bondage to sin. Um, and then, and then when you're free from sin, you present yourself to God as though who have been brought from death to life. And your members of God, uh, and, and your members to God as instrument for righteousness, and sin will have dominion over you no more. So why why did Jesus tell us the two things? So that we can test ourselves, that we can re-examine our life to see if we are truly his disciple. John, the author of the gospel, also wrote in 1 John that if we say that we have fellowship with him, namely Jesus, while we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. So here's my question for you. Do these two marks of, of being a true disciple or of Jesus exhibit in your life? And these realities in your life? So, and, and if, if they're not, I mean, do you, the question would be, do you have fellowship with them? Do you have fellowship with Christ? And if you don't, then I entreat you and I, I urge you to, to accept Christ for who he is and then, and then trust in him alone for salvation. And if you do that, I mean, God promises that he will forgive sin and then he would remove your sin from east to west and then he will give you a new heart with a new identity, and you become his son and daughter. And then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And when the son set you free, then you are free indeed, friends. I believe in Jesus right now, and then you become his disciple, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So believe, become, and then be free. Thank you.